Is it time to raise your rates? Is it time to drop them? You're getting started and you're like, I don't know where to even start with this. How do I determine my prices? Well, that's what I want to talk about on today's video. Greg Todd here, creator of Smart Success Healthcare. I help healthcare professionals build their business skills and strategies so that they can add a zero to their bottom line and get paid. That's what we're trying to do here, you guys. Today, I want to help you all with how to determine your pricing for your particular business. I'm going to give you five different things for you to consider as you are making your prices. Now, if you want more help from me, then go into sshcgroup.com. I'll probably send you a message within 24 hours of you joining the group. Ask me particular questions about your particular situation, and I'll do my best to answer it. Okay, so here's the deal, you guys. I started my business in 2005. Um, the reality is that when I started uh, Renewal Rehab, uh, I wasn't in charge of my pricing. Renewal Rehab was already established. It was one little small clinic, and I bought into that clinic, um, and we were taking insurance. So I wasn't in charge of my pricing because when you're going through insurance, they set the price for you, and that sucks. That created a huge problem. It didn't allow me to attach what my value was and the problem that I was truly solving. The insurance said, this is what you're going to get paid. So I didn't figure this out into much later on, and now I understand it. And I charge a pretty penny for the different services that I offer in my different businesses. Okay, so let's hit these five different things. And I'm just going to give you different examples in a few of the different business ventures that I have. Okay, so um, the, the five things that you need to consider. Let's talk about number one, the market you are in. Who is your audience? Okay, you want to make sure that you're in a market to where uh, people actually, number one, they need to want your service, okay? But some of you are in markets where the people don't have a lot of disposable income. Some of you are in markets where the people have a lot of disposable income. The majority of you, though, are in markets where people have the potential to have disposable income, but they have the option of deciding if they want to dispose that on you or not. I don't know if that's a good word. But anyways, that's basically what goes on for the majority of people. Okay, so I'll give you an example. I was at, um, I was up in North Georgia and we were finishing the final touches on our home. And up there, there's not like a bunch of like shops and stuff like that. So there's like a TJ Maxx, there's a Walmart. Um, if you want to go to like, you know, Bed Bath & Beyond and whatnot, you got to go to Atlanta, which is like an hour and 45 minutes away. So we weren't going to do that. So we went to a TJ Maxx, right? And uh, when we were at TJ Maxx, you know, we were there to pick up like little, you, you know, like a vase and, you know, some pictures to put on the wall and this and that and blah, 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 blah. Okay, great. But my wife then kind of started to veer off into the purses section. She's looking at purses. I'm like, okay. So I'm there with her and I'm looking and like, one of the purses is like six bucks. Now, that's six dollars for a purse. But there's other purses, not necessarily in TJ Maxx, but in other places like Louis Vuitton, Michael Kors, Coach. Those purses are Thousands of dollars. Maybe not Michael Kors. Maybe that's like a hundred. I think I bought that for my wife one Christmas. One Christmas, I got my wife a Louis V. It's like $1,500, y'all. It's a purse. Well, some people want that. It's usually lines to those stores. By the way, the dude that owns Louis Vuitton is now the richest man in the world. There is a market out there for people that want to buy purses from TJ Maxx. And then there's a group of people that really, really value status. And they want to get purses from Louis V. So the market you are in, do you understand that? Who are you going after? Who's, who's the people that's going to be your jam? Okay. That's the first thing you need to really think about. Do I want to set myself at that or do I want to set myself down here? Okay. That's, that's the first thing. Number two, the problem that you solve. Here's the way you need to be looking at this. How does it make the person money or how does it save them money? Now you're like, wait a minute, Greg. I'm in healthcare. I'm not in the money-making thing. Okay, so I'm going to give you an example for me, okay? Uh, so I recently, I'm just like, literally, it's been two days since I've been able to get back on the Peloton, okay? My knee, uh, my right knee, my patellofemoral joint just started acting up. It acted up about 30 days ago when I was um, actually in North Georgia again. So I was doing this move, uh, this Pilates thing, and I came up, and I guess I just bent my knee back too far, and it irritated my patellofemoral joint. For those of you that are PTs, you know what I'm talking about. But basically, it irritated my patellofemoral joint, and right after that, like not even two hours later, I got in the car and drove nine and a half hours back home. 
And so because my knee was bent at 90 degrees and it was already irritated, my knee swelled up and I was just like, dang, man. And it threw me off. Now, I got to be honest with you. For me, working out affects my job performance. My videos are better. When my videos have great energy, like more people come into my world. I, I haven't had the same level of energy in the last uh, 30 days. I've still been working out, but I've just been walking and limping. Now I feel good. You can probably see it in my videos. If you look at the videos probably two, three weeks ago that I put up on YouTube, you'll see the difference. Like I feel great right now. I'm alert. I feel great. And it costs me money to be hurt. Okay. So it's just something that I think that we need to really, really consider and really, really think of. If you're helping somebody with a health problem, how much is this costing them right now to have this problem? When I was in the hospital with the vid, a year and a half ago, it was costing me tens of thousands of dollars a week by not being able to operate my businesses. You need to figure out the problem you solve and how it either makes them money or how does it save them money. How many people are wasting money in the traditional healthcare model doing things this, that, da, 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 and all this stuff? Like, so many people are wasting money because they're having to go to this person, having to go to that person, having to go to this person, having to go to that person, right? So, that's a huge thing, you guys, and you need to figure that out because whatever the problem is, that's going to tell us, okay, what is the monetary amount? How much can I charge in relation to that, which I'm going to talk about with number five. All right, number three, what is the confidence that you have behind them getting the result? The more confidence and the more proof there is, the higher you can charge. The shorter the time frame of getting the results, the higher you can charge. The longer the time frame Mm, the more you become like everybody else. How much work is it going to take for them to get the results? The more work it takes for them, the less you charge. The less work it takes, the more you can charge. That's the reason why if you go to a personal trainer, personal trainers can charge anywhere between, I don't know, $30 per session up to $300 per session if you're a premium personal trainer. What does personal training do? It's work. It's work to be able to get people the body that they want. Conversely, you do liposuction, and that's $30,000, not $30. It's a 1,000 times more. Why? Because it's less work. These are all things you want to think about. Now, you're like, wait, 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 I'm not into that. I'm not a surgeon. Okay, well, can you make things easier for people to be able to work with you? If you go to someone's home, that makes it easier for them. If you bring stuff to them, that makes it easier. If you give them content or things for them to be able to follow and they don't always have to physically call you and they have it on demand, that makes it easier for them, okay? Like right now, there's actually a dude that is gonna be coming to my house that's gonna be fixing my gas heater and I'm not home. So I actually paid $300 to have this door key put in so that when the guy comes up to my home, I can press a button and it's gonna open up my home. That makes it easier for when I'm not home to let people in and out of my house. I paid money to have cameras at certain parts of my home so that I can make sure that nobody's doing anything to my kids. It makes it easier for me to feel safe and for my kids to feel safe that daddy might be at work, but daddy's still watching. You guys following what I'm saying? You've got to think about those things. And as you can make things easier, you can make it more confident, you can decrease the time frame, you can increase the price of what it is that you're charging people. All right, number four, you need to decide if you are going to be premium or commodity. What's the difference? Premium, Louis V. Commodity, Bobo brand. There are certain people that are premium. This past weekend, I was at a car show with my kids, okay? Um, and... All that was at this car show was premium cars. Whether they were antiques or they were Lamborghinis and Ferraris. The majority of people don't buy cars like that. But there's a group of them out there that that's all they want. They are not interested in the Kia. They are not interested in a Hyundai. They are not interested in a Ford. They call those found on road dead. You've got to decide, am I going to be a premium or am I going to be commodity? By the way... You can make money in either of them. It's just that with commodity, the profit margins are going to be a lot tinier, but you're going to be able to 
be in front of a lot more people. A lot more people want that. You got to decide on that. Number five, whatever you price on those things that I just talked about between one and four, it should give them a five to 10 X return on their investment. I'm going to give you an example. One of my programs is $30,000. But that program, I'm giving people a way for them to be able to start their business, but not just start their business through coaching. I'm giving them all the tools, all the software. I'm giving them all the scripts, all the things they need to say. And I've seen people come into my program and after one year, they've made as much as four hundred and fifty dollars to $500,000 in the first year. In the second year, I've seen people go as far up as $1.5 million. So if I know that that's a result, it's not the result I get for everyone because it's all dependent on the person, on are they willing to do the work, this, that. But can I charge comfortably? If someone's, if we've got multiple people that have gotten 300000 could I charge 30000 Sure, because I can confidently say, I'm charging you this, but this, if you do these things and you do the work, you have the potential to be able to make this, which is a 10x return on their investment. I think you can do anywhere between 5 to 10x return on investment. Those are the things that you need to be thinking about if you're trying to decide what your pricing should be. I've got to be honest with you guys. The majority of you in healthcare, you price yourself so low. This is what you're doing. You're looking at what everybody else is doing. And you're saying, okay, I'm going to price somewhere around there, maybe a little bit lower. And then I'm going to position myself in the marketplace by giving you more of my time. And you're actually setting yourself to be a low profit, low volume business, and you're not going to be able to sustain it. So please get your pricing right, determine your pricing properly. And if you do that, you'll be able to stay in business, have a profitable business and grow your business. So I hope that helps. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't. We'll see you on the next video.